This is a problem that involves the application of Newton's second law of motion. Take a moment to pause the video and read the question carefully. Now let's figure out exactly what we need to calculate and the information that might be important to do that calculation. The last sentence here says we need to calculate an acceleration, an acceleration of one of the masses in the problem. Importantly we're told the two masses, one of them is four kilograms and one of them is two and a half kilograms, and there's some additional information that may be useful in determining our calculation. One of them is that these two masses are connected by a light rope. We'll see what that might mean in a minute. And additionally, the pulley that's involved is frictionless and also has negligible mass. And again, we'll see what that might mean soon. Now, in this diagram that's supplied here, I might label these two masses M1 and M2. And my question immediately tells me that I can say M1 will be 2.5 kilograms just because it looks like it's a smaller box, and M2 will be 4 kilograms. Now, I'm concerned with calculating an acceleration. I'm told I have some masses. Uh, there's going to be a gravitational force pulling on these masses. There's also a rope attached to them. So the obvious thing to think about here is Newton's second law of motion that tells me I can relate the net force to the mass and the acceleration. And I have two objects in this problem, so I'll probably want to consider them at some point separately by considering their free body diagrams. Let's begin with a free body diagram for mass 1. Here's mass 1, and it will of course have its weight downwards, m1g. It has a rope attached to it, so that might be pulling up with a tension that I'll call capital T. And I look at the diagram, and I can't think of any other forces that will be acting upon mass 1, so I think that free body diagram is complete. Now let's think about the free body diagram for mass 2. It will, of course, look very similar. Mass 2 will have its weight downwards, m2g. It also has a rope attached to it, and it will have, potentially, a tension pulling upwards on it as well. Now you can see in these two diagrams that I've drawn, I've put the same value, capital T, for the tension pulling up on each of these masses. Is that a reasonable thing to do? Well, I go back to the information supplied. It tells me that I'm using a light rope. Now, light rope is telling me I can ignore the mass of the rope itself. If the rope's mass was important, that may lead to different tensions in different parts of the rope. Also, I'm told the pulley that the rope goes over is frictionless and of negligible mass. That means there's no additional forces to consider between the pulley and the rope. And in fact, for the pulley to rotate, I don't have to worry about any forces or torques there because the pulley has essentially zero mass as far as the problem is concerned. That means the tension in the rope will be the same all the way along, just like in a normal stretched rope. So I can put the same tension in each of these diagrams. Before I start applying Newton's second law, I need to think about the directions involved in this problem. Importantly, I need to decide what direction is positive and what direction is negative. And I want to make the two free body diagrams consistent with each other. Let's start with the diagram for M1, and for no particular reason, I might choose upwards here as the positive direction. That would mean if mass 1 moved upwards, it would have a positive velocity. If it accelerated upwards, it would have a positive acceleration. Because mass 2 is joined to mass 1 by the rope over the pulley, I would now need to make the positive direction in this diagram downwards. Because if mass 1 moves in a positive direction upwards, now mass 2, which has to move downwards, is also moving in a positive direction. So, now I'll apply Newton's second law to the first free body diagram. What's the net force here? Well, it's a tension upwards, that will be a positive quantity, minus a weight downwards, that will be a negative quantity, and that must equal the mass times the acceleration. Over here in the second diagram, now I have the weight downwards is a positive quantity, and the tension upwards is a negative quantity, and again by Newton's second law, that must equal mass 2 times its acceleration. 
you'll note that I've used the same symbol for acceleration in these two equations. Again, because they're joined by a rope, they will be moving with the same velocities with the same accelerations. So even though the question asked me for the acceleration of the 4 kilogram mass, it will be the same acceleration for both of the masses. I now have these two equations from Newton's second law. And you can see there's two things in the problem that I don't know. I don't know the tension in the rope, and I don't know the acceleration of the masses. But because I have two equations with two things that are unknown, I can in principle solve them simultaneously to find those values. Now, I'm not particularly interested in finding the value of the tension because the question has asked me for the acceleration. So I'll now go ahead and solve these equations for the acceleration. There are many ways to solve these two equations simultaneously. I'll go ahead with the way that I find easiest, but if you have a different way of solving them, that's probably fine too. I'll begin by making t the subject of the formula for mass 1. I can now write that t will equal m1a plus m1g. Now I can substitute that expression for t over into this equation here for mass 2. I can now write that m2g, and instead of writing minus t, I'll write m1a plus m1g. And that must equal m2a. Now with a little bit of algebraic manipulation, hopefully you can get some practice doing this yourself, I can show that the acceleration here will equal m2 minus m1 divided by m2 plus m1 all multiplied by g. And now I'm almost at my answer because I know the values for all of these quantities. I know that m2 is 4 and m1 is 2.5. So I can divide that by 4 plus 2.5 multiply by 9.8 and I will do that on my calculator and get a number of 2.3 meters per second squared. And that's actually a positive quantity when I do the calculation which tells me that indeed the 4 kilogram mass will be accelerating downwards and the 2.5 kilogram mass will be accelerating upwards. They're the positive directions. So that's my answer. Before we finish it's worth having a little look at this expression here that we developed without any numbers in it. Let's think, how can we check if that's actually a correct description? Well, we can take some, some limiting cases. Let's imagine if m1 equaled m2. What happens to this expression here? Well, on the top line we get m minus m. They're both the same mass now, and that tells us that the acceleration would in fact be zero. That makes sense because if we put two equal masses over a pulley with a rope, we'd expect them to have balanced forces. There'd be no acceleration at all. That seems to work. What in fact if m1 equals zero? Let's look at our expression again. If m1 equals zero, we simply have an acceleration that's m2 divided by m2. That's just one. So our acceleration is just one times g. And again, that's what we'd expect. If m1 was zero, m1 didn't exist, m2 would just have gravity pulling it downwards, there'd be no tension in the rope pulling upwards, there'd be nothing attached to the other end of the rope, and mass 2 would just accelerate downwards in free fall with an acceleration equal to g.